Lewis and the others will need every ounce of confidence now. Coming up is one of the most intense and nerve-wracking stages of the fighter school. Formation flying, the art of sticking together. It's something every fighter pilot must learn as a matter of survival. When air combat first started back in World War I, it was every man for himself. And the dogfights were so chaotic, they called them furballs. By the Second World War, fighter pilots discovered it was safer to work in pairs. And they've gone into combat that way ever since. We never go to war by ourselves. The only time you'll find yourself fighting by yourself is if your leader, your winger, blows up. The reason is simple. At 400 miles an hour, the rear view mirrors on a fighter aren't much good. And no matter how hard a pilot swivels his head, there's a huge blind spot right on his tail. So, a lone fighter is always vulnerable. But when they fly as a pair, the lead and his wingman can watch each other's back. They call it checking your six. Because pilots describe the airspace as though they're sitting in the center of a giant clock, with 12 o'clock dead ahead and 6 o'clock directly behind. OK, formation one. Every rookie aims to become a lead one day. But first, they'll have to prove they can be trusted as wingers. Up until now, you've been uh, flying the Hornet as a singleton, basically, and this is where you start to get into the more tactical uh, phase of the flying. And you're gonna turn... They come from other aircraft where they flew formation, so the concept of formation flying is not new to them. It's just how to do it in the F-18. It's bigger, it's faster. And it's scarier. Okay, it's gonna be big, it's gonna be big, it's gonna be big. Prep yourself for it, and that way you won't be tempted to fall back. Okay? Okay. If lead says check right, then just respond. It's a little It's also going to be way twitchier in this situation than any jet they've flown before. Walk your throttles forward, okay? Just in that sort of like warm. Just a little just a little walks, so maybe that's all it needs. Okay? Remember an old car, you kind of just move the steering wheel for no reason at all and the track straight? This plane, if you tap the, 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 the stick around, it'll smash the plane around all of the time. Gotta be on the ball. Gotta be on the ball. Everybody formation's legs. And more than any other so far, today's flight is going to test them. So what do you think the number one objective is? Don't hit the other guy. Twenty thousand feet up, three hundred and seventy-five miles an hour, a place and a speed where a bad move and a split second can kill. How close does it get? A hundred feet? Fifty? Today's mission, fly within 15 feet of another jet. All right, so like you said, man, here's where you earn your money, right? Yeah. At this speed, you're covering the length of two football fields every second. How do you fly this close at that speed? Simple geometry. Seamus needs to work the angles. Do I bring it in just a little bit closer than that? A little closer than that. Okay. First, look for the missile tip at the end of the wing. Now, Seamus needs to line that up with the maple leaf in the circle. 
Then, he's got to pull forward until he's flush with the burner cans on the jet beside him. It's incredible how close it is. That's good right there. Just relax. You're squeezing the juice out of that stick up there, I can tell. A little bit, eh? Just relax a little bit. You should be able to do this with your fingers. All right. Experienced pilots make it look easy, graceful, smooth, calm. But students, ain't that elegant. Okay, back to it, back to it. There we go. Okay, Mike, walk the throttles more than what I'm doing. Mike has to make endless tiny adjustments with his hands and feet. Why don't we just go forward up now? And then there's the backseat driver. He's roaring away at the full metal one because he doesn't have 200 pounds of God's gift to earth in the backseat. <laughs> if you call me self-loading baggage, I will reach out there and crown you one. I'd never say that about you, Spike. Flying off the wing is tough enough. Now, try this. A close formation called line astern. To get there, you fly into the back end of an F-18 till you feel the other jets blast. Once your butt starts shaking, you're in the right place. And if you think that jet looks intimidating from here, wait till he does this. Brilliant. The flat turn. Look at how big that airplane is. See how big he is? Yep. That's flat turn right there, man. Ah, uh, freaking big. huge. You have to stay close, even though your instincts are telling you to run away. That's what I was saying in the briefing, right? And if you keep him close like this, it's actually easier than if you let him get away from you, okay? Okay. It's high stress flying. But when you nail it, you own it. And despite his color commentary, Spanky is impressed. Hey, see any parts missing off the airplane? That's then a good it's thing. It's good to go, yeah. For Formation One, that's a successful mission. You can tell guys who have a little bit of experience, who have flown Formation and other airplanes a bit more. The only thing better than a great flight is when the deputy commanding officer makes a show of it. <laughs> Dave McLeod, the new guy, the guy who started the course a month behind everyone else, is on a roll. What'd you think? <laughs> Find out in a few minutes. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get scared. So. Dave has just nailed a near-perfect formation flight. Uh, the wing work, echelon and line of stern, I thought that was uh, double awesome superior, okay? So it was really good to see, okay? So Superior. Pilots call that a snake, the best grade there is. Okay, you've done it once, so you're not like a, an uber god, but for Form 1, Form 1 levels, that's a superior trip, okay? Around the squadron, word travels faster than an F-18 on full burners. We were like upside down and he was still in position. Like, you gotta be kidding me. I still can't do that. Seamus Allen has a talent for formation flying too. But in his rush to get into the air, he's been forgetting important details on the ground. And it's cost him. His last flight was a disaster. He has to repeat it, and this time, it's got to be flawless. It's being watched, I have to fix it. So for me, that's my stress on this flight, is being accurate with my checks, not missing anything. Seamus has to reel off more than 300 checks. 300 opportunities to mess up, while the instructor unofficially runs down the clock. Air fueling probe, track, external tanks. Norm, down switch off, internal switch, norm, gen type control switch, norm, guard down, scope. This down. time, Seamus gets it right. Okay, 
But now, the hard part begins, starting with a formation takeoff. When you're hurtling down the runway with another jet this close, it's always unnerving. Formation is about position. Seamus has to know where he is, where the next guy is, and where they're going. Together, you're four times as strong. Alone, you're a sitting duck. Impressive as it may look, flying this close isn't much good in combat. After all, you wouldn't want to shoot a heat seeker with lead a few feet off your wingtip. So today's mission is long range formation, putting some air between the jets. But in combat, they must maintain radio silence over enemy territory. So how do you turn four planes this far apart without anyone saying a word? The lead jet starts a 90 degree turn to the left. When the wingman sees Lead's nose pointed at him, he starts his turn. Lead then passes below and behind the wingman. The pair at the back of formation follows suit, and they're all back on the attack. Experienced pilots say even that far apart, you can spot a plane against a cloud like a bug on a bedsheet. But for a rookie like Seamus, that bug seems mighty elusive. Trunk. Oh, I'm so behind. Because Lead is below him, Seamus has to twist in his seat, stretching, leaning, trying to keep visual contact. Lead starts his 90 degree turn. Seamus follows, but gets his own angle wrong. And at the critical moment, he loses sight of the other jet. They call it going blind. The rest of the formation leaves Seamus behind. But listen closely to this. Nothing. And that's Seamus' real sin. Failing to radio his lead to say he's on his own and exposed. Going blind is a drag, but call it out right away, call visual right away. I'll tell you a little secret, all right? As a wingman, you will not be visual 100% of the time, okay? You'll probably be visual about 95% of the time, but there will be times when you momentarily, you'll lose your lead and then, okay, pick him up, lose lead, pick him up. Seamus was blind and alone for just a few moments, long enough to get blown out of the sky in combat. 